Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 242, Not Your Grandpa's Garmin. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we're here to help you tech better. We've got all kinds of tips and tech news for you. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Well, hello to you, sir. Hello. It's so good to see your smiling face. Yes, I am smiling. I always smile when we get a chance to uh, join via Zoom and record our podcast and share yeah. all of the tech knowledge and non-knowledge that we've learned over the week with all of our listeners so that they can uh, just know what's going on and use their technology better. You had me smiling earlier today by sending a, a photo of your daughter playing with uh lego minifigures uh, yes. that are star wars based yes there was the rancor battle yes i saw we just yoda got in there rancor from ebay <laughs> it took about a month and a half to get here i got oh, her a no. bunch of lego star wars minifigs for her birthday and then you generously gave her a couple extras and duplicates that you had in your collection so they were a lame compared to the ones that, that oh. you already got her so Quick pro tip, especially if you have a young child who is into Star Wars Legos, which we've discussed before, can be very expensive and you're not looking to collect and invest in these. Uh, look around on eBay. There are cheap knockoffs that, uh, you know, a couple bucks a piece, you can get all of the, the hot items, which if you go to a Lego store or even Amazon to try to get those minifigs, it gets quite expensive quick. So I figure with a four-year-old, uh, she is probably going to be okay with the lookalikes, and mm. uh, they've all—they're all just fine. The cape on Boba F- Boba Fett, Boba Fett, Boba Boba Fett. Sorry, all you Star the Bobo. Warsians. I think it's, is that Bobo. No, that's the. No, that's it's an aid. It definitely yeah. is. The little cape on there was not the highest quality material, so it ripped while I was trying to assemble <laughs> the minifig. But other than oh, that. No. Uh, they are pretty good. But anyways, let's get into some follow-up. Yeah. <laughs> we are here to talk about technology. This is not the Lego Star Wars minifig. Uh, well, maybe it should be. Yes. If, if you are interested in that, check out uh, Boone Livingston from, uh, from Portland and from Lego Masters fame. He does a lot of live streams and stuff. And You can uh, find him on YouTube by searching for Boone Builds. Yes, I subscribe Boone to Builds, his that's his uh, stuff. So if you're looking for the Lego stuff, we are not going to create a podcast off of that because we're going to stick with Not Nerd for now. Dave, sh- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll just, we'll do a special episode where we just can uh, all of the technology and just talk about Legos. Yeah, that'd be great. So our follow-up for the week, uh, we've been talking kind of this progressing uh, angst towards TikTok. The U.S. House of Representatives has voted to ban TikTok on all federal devices. So I just wanted to mention that. It continues to uh, show up for different places and especially government organizations that seem to be cautious when uh, allowing TikTok, just not knowing with information going to China and not knowing what all is going on there. There are some security concerns. Yeah. You're wise to be leery of what the country is capable of. So this is just the House voting. Now, does it also have to pass the Senate and then uh, not get vetoed by President Trump in order to be a law or, or what what is yeah, this here? I, it was a little vague i i kind of read it originally as that they had just decided not to do this but they voted to bar federal employees so it looks like it will have yeah. to go through our governmental process and i will quickly remind people that we are the most non-partisan tech podcast on the internet and that is absolutely true because i listen to all of them and they are all very partisan yes, yes. we try to keep <laughs> uh, politically neutral yeah so they they voted 336 to 71 and uh yeah we will see where it goes next it's expected to pass its version of the ndaa on tuesday the senate will probably pass its bill later this week the two chambers will then hammer out their differences in a joint conference committee as they do and it always goes so smoothly and all of you tiktok users at home need not worry unless you are a federal employee yes and are using federal equipment 
you can still enjoy TikTok from your home as a private citizen, but that may not last yeah. forever. Who yeah. knows? A couple quick pieces of follow-up on the whole Twitter hack that we discussed in greater length last week. Coinbase, which is one of the big, probably the biggest uh, cryptocurrency bank, let's say, or transaction house, they said that they were able to block $280,000 worth of Bitcoin uh, transfers to the Twitter hackers. So they were able to act very quickly when all of that started happening and they uh, were able to block that so that uh, more people did not give money to those. So that was a good thing. It has also come out that more than a thousand employees and contractors at Twitter had access to this account tool that was uh, used for these hacks. So that seems like way too many employees and with the uh, stories of you know it being just stored in uh, you know a pinned note in s their Slack chat and different <laughs> places that um, I believe that there are probably some people at Twitter that lost their jobs and uh, that number will shrink from 1,000 employees, especially the yeah. third-party contractors, which we know from security and privacy stories. Um, you, it's possible. I mean, employee can be just the same as a third-party contractor. They're not necessarily worse, but they just being outside of the Twitter realm, they might not have the same security practices as someone inside. But obviously, inside, they didn't have very yeah. good ones anyways. <laughs> And they may have less, an outside contractor might have less solidarity to the company yes. if they're not working directly for them. So so who knows? But yes, I'm thinking maybe five, ten people should know yeah. that password and nobody yeah. else. A thousand is ridiculous. Yes, yes. Maybe enough to have 24-7 coverage. I don't know how often they have to utilize that to block accounts and such, but it seems a little crazy. And the, the third piece I read this week uh, that probably the bigger story here with these high profile accounts than the Bitcoin scam is the fact that the hackers accessed the direct messages of these accounts. So you have people like Joe Biden, Elon Musk, uh, and you know, Apple and all these companies, the direct messages within Twitter were accessed as well. So if they were able to download that information, uh, you would have to imagine that at least on some of those, you know, hundred plus accounts that were accessed, that there was some uh, very personal or private or security, you know, data in there that they had access to, which definitely is not good. Well, let's get on to something a little funner. The, we, how often <laughs> I would love to go back. One of our listeners uh, with some spare time on their hands, please go back to every episode and see how many times we have talked about different streaming services on the podcast. Oh man, there's so many. And we had mentioned this one before, but it is now more widely available. The NBC free Peacock service which they've released with all of their content, tons of content. I've seen some brief reviews I've looked at that it seems to be pretty good. So it is completely free to sign up uh, for an ad-supported version. Then you can... With some caveats. Yes. yes. Go ahead. I, I will interrupt, sorry, and then we can continue this. I signed up actually before the show and was testing the waters and looked at Parks and Rec and uh, Battlestar Galactica. And it seems like they're following the Hulu model of we're going to give you some free stuff, but it's going to be like maybe season one of a nine season series or a couple uh, of free episodes. Yes. And so when they say free with ads, you're getting a very limited catalog. Gotcha. But please continue with their other pricing. Tiers. Yeah. So they do have some uh, for pay options as well. For four ninety nine, you get access then to the entire catalog. So it is, it's like a teaser, and which I believe the CBS All Access, which you have more experience with that service, they don't give you anything on the free tier, do they? You have to pay. Yeah, they. it's $10, um, and I think it still might be ad-supported, I yeah. can't remember. But yeah, there's the, the free, there's no free tier. They may have some videos for you to yeah. watch to kind of entice you, but it's not like, hey, here's a bunch of free content gotcha. to watch. And they may have changed that, but it's been a couple of years since I've use them but but then you can also pay a premium plus yes. to get all the content with no ads asterisk <laughs> some pr some programs will still contain ads due to streaming rights which i didn't understand that in particular but this is the same with hulu yeah. hulu is uh there's a free tier which is basically nothing there's the for pay with ads and then there's pay even more 
and we promise not to give you too many extra yeah. ads. So I, yeah, it's uh, so yeah, basically ten bucks a month if you really want some NBC content. Uh, you could check it out and then you'll avoid the ads, which in my experience, streaming ads are just never a pleasant, but I have been very spoiled with uh, DVR and non-ad uh, show watching for a long time. So going back to that, um, another entry into this, which I believe we teased uh, when they announced it, Plex has launched their live TV service. Now, the content on this is... Uh, not premium is what I will say. It does include channels like Yahoo Finance. Ooh, Reuters. Reuters. Reuters is Reuters, the word. Reuters. I, that one always gets me. Tune Goggles, Kid Doodle, Doodle TV, uh, some other ones like Cooking Panda, Drink TV. Might have to look at that one. Fail Army, <laughs> uh, Docurama, The P Pet Collective, and then they have specialized channels dedicated to individual programs like the Bob Ross channel or her, the Deal or No Deal channel. So this is very similar to the Pluto TV, which was a previous pick of the week for me. They do even have the Surf TV channel. So it looks like... It might even be the yeah, same content. It does look like, because uh, I know that Surf TV and the game show Central are both ones that I uh, have watched on the Pluto TV, but... It, Plex was just my pick of the week a couple weeks ago, and uh, so if you're already using Plex, you're getting some of this stuff, and it's not going to be, um, again, it's not your NBC type content, but you can probably find something to watch on there. It is only live, so you can't record stuff, you know, pause and that kind of stuff, but they are working to expand, and I, I'm really impressed with Plex right now. They seem to really be uh, trying to provide a viable product uh, in the in the space. I have a question for yes. you. If today uh, there was a law passed that you could only have one streaming Ooh. service right now today, what would it be? And I'll mention a few, but there are others certainly. I'm talking about Netflix, Disney, uh, this new uh, Peacock. Peacock, which I think they missed the opportunity to use Katy Perry's Peacock song as their yes. theme song. I, I want to see your peacock cock cock. Have you ever heard that song? I don't song? know if I am familiar with that Katy oh, Perry boy. song. Oh boy, you are in for a good. treat. Uh, make sure Isla's not within yeah. your shot when you listen to that song. But I digress. Of all these streaming services, Hulu, what is your pick if you could only pick one right yes. now? Uh, well, I will not cheat and say YouTube TV because that's for one is $60 no. a month. So that's pretty much a cable service. I would, man, just off of gut instinct, I would probably say Netflix, just because that seems to be what I watch the most on. But Disney Plus, uh, we we are using that one more. I mean, and I have way more of them than I should. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I would say probably Netflix. I Amazon Prime, I need to get into more. And that one would be great to be the only one because I already pay for Amazon Prime, so yeah. that would save me money, but how about you? What what do you think is your pre Prime, not, yeah. not Amazon, but your pr preference? Yes, and I actually forgot about some of these. I forgot about Amazon Prime, and as you were talking, I was like, no Apple TV oh, Plus? Yeah. Why wouldn't that be your pick with its five shows that yeah. are on there? But I have to agree, right now for my money, Netflix would be the one, and then I would have a fallback of Amazon Prime since I'm already paying yeah. for it, um, which is exactly what we used to have before we started <laughs> creeping into Hulu and creeping into all these other services. And I got to tell you, in, in an effort to save money, I probably will drop Disney Plus and Hulu at some point yeah. in time. The only thing that's keeping me on Disney Plus is the forthcoming season two of The Mandalorian. Oh, yes. We uh, need to watch that. Outside of that, whatever. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's complicated as we've said from the very beginning, and to complicate things even more, Spotify is launching video podcasts, and I believe we talked about this 
so there's been some a very very small portion of podcasts that are video mainly the twit network the this week in tech mm-hmm. leo laporte that i subscribe to many of the shows and i do get the video version just in case they're t- showing something as they're discussing or just to see who's on the show but i'm not looking at it most of the time but spotify is moving into this area and launching some video podcasts now there are some nice features. Uh, it does appear that most of them will be available on the free tier of Spotify. And th- unlike regular unpaid YouTube, they will allow background audio. So much like my situation with the Twit podcast, I can start watching them. And then if I want to go to another app, or you have the picture in picture, which is available in, uh, will be available in iOS 14. Um, but if you just want to listen to it, you still have that option. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the production quality. Twit has a million dollar studio that they do all of their stuff in. Uh, I'm guessing some of it might end up looking like, you know, a recorded Zoom call, which we've discussed mm-hmm. doing for our podcast, and there is zero value in doing that uh, for us. Yeah, most of the video podcasts are just people sitting in, around a table with some mics and some headphones yes. on. And so they may have a couple cameras where they switch back and forth to a couple people, but it's really not that interesting unless there's content that someone's created yeah. to be a video. Yes. If it's just a bunch of people sitting around talking, it's not that exciting. Yes. And I will remind people that you can use other podcast players like Overcast or Downcast or any of these to play both video and audio podcasts. I take that yeah. back. Overcast yes. can only do audio. You cast, can you podcast, can download the video, but it'll <laughs> only play the audio. Yeah, but there are many that'll play both yes. video and audio, so don't feel like you're stuck with having to, to use uh, Spotify yeah, to no. watch your video content. There are, there are many other options. I'm still kind of anti-Spotify and podcasts. Yes. I choose not to click on any of the links for podcasts because it keeps getting larger and larger in my... I'm like, I'm here to listen to music. Yeah, that is my feeling as well. And, uh, you know, famously, Joe Rogan is going to be moving to Spotify and he does you know, very nice looking video versions of his on YouTube, which he gets, you know, tons of views. So I'm guessing that this is probably moving towards his deal where they have said he won't be on YouTube anymore. So uh, it would naturally Mm -hmm. fit that his will be in Spotify um, as well as some of the other ones they've done. But yeah, I'm some of the advertising stuff that Spotify is doing with podcasts. And it seems like they're they're trying to take a great open thing and kind of put some restrictions on it so that uh, they can make money off of it, which you can't blame them for, but I don't know if it's in the best interest of the consumer. And a pro tip, you can watch YouTube content in picture in picture if you view the content on your iOS device through the Safari web browser versus the app. Ah. And iOS 14 that's coming out, you can do it on your phone, but right now you can do it on your iPad using Safari oh. and um, making it full screen and then exiting uh, out. going exiting out. So you can do it. It's a little hacky, but yes, the YouTube app will not allow you to do it um, through the application, but through the website, you can you can make it happen. Very nice. And you know what else we always make happen? Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. Well, speaking of social media and all this video and ad tech and all these things that are going on and TikTok, oh, Calgon, take me away. <laughs> I've got a tip that we've kind of talked about before, but I wanted to remind people. I surf Reddit more often than I yes. should, and people post all kinds of videos there. They even post TikTok videos on Reddit, so I don't even have to subscribe to TikTok to watch TikTok. <laughs> you get TikTok the best of content. within your yeah, other it's, surface. It's the best of. But so many people, one, make vertical video, which I think on TikTok you can only yes. make vertical video. Is that correct? Um, so that's that's a problem. <laughs> yes. But but even worse, and I think more egregious, is when people use their iOS device to do a screen capture of, of either they played a video and they want to record it because they don't know how to download it, or if they're filming something, or who know, who knows what they're doing. But they're doing a screen capture of an app or whatever. They will start the recorder, and then they'll show the application or the video or whatever, and then they'll stop it. And in the video, you can see the little drop down come down where they hit start record and there's this they got to swipe up and the video starts and then you see them swipe down and stop the video why are people including 
the video recording start and stop user interface in their videos. My postulation is, is that they don't know how to trim yes. the video or they're too yes. lazy, which is probably the case. But I'm going to show you, dear people, or at least I'm going to demonstrate with my <laughs> voice how to trim the videos on your iPhone. So first you need a video oh. and you can just record, you know, turn on your camera and record a short video. Or if you have one in your camera roll already, you can play along at home. So here's a nice video I found in my camera roll of my backyard using my wise cam to take a time-lapse video of the shadow moving oh, across nice. the backyard. You know, I, I'm an exciting <laughs> yeah, person. Watching the grass grow. The type of, <laughs> this type of things I do. So once the video is on your screen, what you need to do is tap the edit icon in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Then you'll see a menu or like a timeline at the bottom of your screen. There'll be a little play button. There's a, like a video with a scrubber and that's about it. But you will notice that on the left and right hand sides, there are small, very, very shallow chevrons pointing to the left and to the right. If you tap and hold on those chevrons, they will, and you start dragging, your uh, highlight window will turn yellow and you can move the in and out point of your video, thus trimming off the recording interface. Um, this is also useful for the people who are recording themselves on their computer or their phone and they're putting it online. And you'll, you'll usually see someone diving away from the camera and then they'll start talking and do their thing. And then when they're done, they pause then you see him dive towards the camera to hit the stop button. Well, that awkward diving to and from the camera can be trimmed out by using the trim function in your photos. And so there are many online tutorials. Apple has some great mm -hmm. articles on how to do this very thing. But if you want to bump up your production game, be sure to trim off any superfluous, is that the word I'm looking sure. for? Um, content at the beginning or end of your video because guess what you mentioned it earlier you're just wasting people's yeah. time if you're putting in a bunch of garbage before and after the gold of your video nobody's got time for that so just simply use your camera rolls trim feature to shorten your video and that's my tip of the week i love it i'm going to add two uh, addendums to this. The first one is if you have a newer iPhone and at least iOS 13, which you should have, that's the release from last year, there are some additional editing features in there that really can up the production value of your video like we're talking about. There is, you can both crop the video if you need to, mm -hmm. and you can straighten it. If you were just a little crooked or something, you want to get that nice horizontal um, horizon line in there, whatever it is, uh, you can quickly do that right in your phone, right in the Photos app. It's all built in now. And you can even do like an auto adjustment where it'll lighten and kind of make it look a little better. With just a couple clicks and a minute of your time, Time, you can make a much better experience. The second addendum, this goes very well in line with something I've said for years with social media and posting stuff. If you don't have to take the time to, let's say, read through it twice to make sure it sounds right, make sure you're getting your point across, other people aren't going to take the time to read through it once. Like if you are sharing content, invest a little time to make it worthwhile to the viewer. It, you know, even if it's just something simple, just take a couple minutes, how many people are gonna see this content and think about how much better you can make it just with these easy steps. So I, I do like this topic of uh, production value that is so easy to do and take that you don't yeah, need a super big simple. super computer anymore. This stuff used to be very difficult. Now, a couple clicks, you're done, it's ready to go. Well, let's move on to our takes of the week. Uh, Instagram is testing a personal fundraiser feature. Now, Facebook has uh, a service like this, and um, GoFundMe is kind of the number one name of this thing, which GoFundMe has to be a little worried if uh, both Facebook and Instagram are going to have this built in. It'll be built on Facebook Pay, I believe is the actual name of it, and mm -hmm. it'll allow you to start a fundraiser now on Instagram. Uh, if it, 
you are raising money for a nonprofit. They waive any credit card or uh, transaction fees if you're doing like a personal one, uh, you know, to buy yourself a new car or new pair of shoes. They will charge, you know, the typical, I think it's three to four percent in processing fees on that. But there's a lot of good done through these fundraisers. Some of the fundraisers, uh, it, it makes me sad that they have to be done because, you know, people should be taken care of, especially the medical bills and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. they are rolling this out to Instagram. So I did not check to see if GoFundMe has a stock price or a value <laughs> uh, and how much that dropped as these built-in services where people are already at continue to expand. Uh, our next story, uh, talking about trying to do good. Uh, we've had these stories with other companies in the past, and we've talked about it with Apple, their commitment to the environment, and they have now committed to be 100% carbon neutral for supply chain and products by 2030. So in, I always chuckle a little bit with these lofty timelines. You know, I think Amazon has said, you know, 2030 or 2040 or something like that. Um, but Apple, their buildings, their, you know, stores, all of that have been carbon neutral, but they're trying to expand that to the factories, the transportation. So they're not uh, going completely solar, but they, uh, <laughs> you know, purchase these carbon offsets and different ways uh, and programs to make it neutral to the environment uh, over time. And Apple has been one of the leaders in this. And it uh, looks like they continue to do that as they expand it forward. But uh, they are a company also that has the money to <laughs> commit to that sort of thing mm -hmm. with their profit margins. Yeah. It allows them to be uh, forefront. And I don't have a link, but there was also, I think it was an anniversary of the American Disabilities Act this mm -hmm. week. And so Apple had put out some information and, you know, Tim Cook had a statement about their commitment to that stuff as well, uh, which they do uh, stay very committed to some of those social causes. And I'm really glad that they're doing this because um, as they grow and get bigger, they could easily just be like, you know what, we're going to keep the money in our supply chain. We're going to use fossil fuels. We're going to use the cheapest stuff that has the most uh, negative environmental impact. But instead, they're committing to spending their own money that they don't have to spend yeah. on making sure the work that they do around the world is as clean as possible. And, you know, people are buying all kinds of packaging and phones and throwing things away, et cetera, et cetera. And they've worked really hard over the years to make the uh, packaging biodegradable and um, environmental friendly and also making it smaller and smaller and smaller. And one of the rumors we don't talk about too much is that the new iPhone that's coming out this fall will not include the power charger adapter in it. I think we've talked about that on the show here. And if that's the case, you know, the power adapter could be thrown away and wasted. But don't forget that the packaging for the phone could get even yes. smaller, which means they can ship more on a truck and an airplane at the same time, which means, you know, less environmental impact. So, and Apple's not the only one no, doing this. No. We often highlight and, you know, showcase them, but many companies are doing the same thing. So if this is something you're interested in and seek out those companies who are being good stewards of the environment through their packaging and and business yes, practices. Yes, if you think about just the progress we've made overall environmentally, uh, there is more work to do, you know, say since the 70s, uh, when <laughs> there was none. Oh, you're throwing yeah, trash out the yeah, window. Just <laughs> burning coal for fun and all of these things. So with what we've <laughs> learned, people have made adjustments and they continue to do that. So, uh, yeah. well, Amazon, these two stories, uh, our next two stories are both about Amazon. The first one, Amazon is America's top advertiser. Amazon mm. spent nearly seven billion with a B dollars on US advertising in 2019, making it the top ad spender in the country, uh, according to a new analysis from Kantar featured in Ad Age. And this article comes from Axios, a bunch of names that don't really matter to any of you. They sound like they're from Star Wars. Kantar? Planet yeah, Kantar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to get that minifig on eBay. Um, but <laughs> the, this article, this uh, 
why they bring it up. They say, why it matters. It wasn't that long ago in 2009 that Jeff Bezos triumphantly declared advertising is the price you pay for having an unremarkable product or service. So he has uh, gone back on that in just uh, a short 10 years from saying that you don't need to advertise uh, to being the leading advertiser in the United States, and uh, hmm. by the numbers, they give the top 10. Do you have any, you might have looked at it, or guesses in the top 10? I scrolled through it. I don't remember, but I'm going to go with GE. Is that one? Do they still make products? <laughs> uh, no, General Motors is number 10 General Motors. on the list. Okay. What about other tech giants like uh, like uh, Apple? Uh, Apple is not on the list. Google is on the list. Uh, number two mm. is Comcast Corporation, but that encompasses a lot of things because uh, I believe what are they advertising NBC, for? I mean, they're a monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> Universal and all of the things under them. Number three is AT and T. Uh, they really want hmm. people to keep buying their cell phone service. Number four is Procter and Gamble, uh, at four point three uh, That's what billion. I was thinking of. Is instead of GE, it was P and G. Procter and P and yes. G. Yeah. Disney at number five, uh, hmm. which okay, that makes know, sense. Alphabet, Google, at number six. Verizon is number seven. Chart these phone carriers. Oh man, they're spending <laughs> a lot of money and. Well, they're making too much money. They got to spend it on yes, advertising. Yes, yes. Number eight is Charter Communications. Uh, you know, similar to Comcast. Nine is American Express, and then, as I said, ten is General Motors. Now, I had listened to an advertising podcast a while ago, and they were talking about Geico and how much money. And you cannot go ten seconds in this world without seeing a Geico ad that is usually very annoying. So you realize it. Um, but I looked them up because I thought that they had said that they spent amazing an amount on advertising and i looked it up and they're uh under two billion dollars a year uh, for advertising <laughs> so just you know pennies there but couch yes, change but yeah you think uh you know why amazon is always on your mind because they spent seven billion dollars in one year uh to stay in front of your mind so i just thought that was an interesting mm -hmm. number and to kind of take a look at that wow the next story related to that Amazon spent a record $4.38 million, with an M, mm. on lobbying during the second quarter, according to a spokeswoman, as the e-commerce giant faced increasing antitrust scrutiny. So uh, this article, they also look at uh, you know Alphabet, Google's parent company, Apple, and Facebook, um, that they have all been spending a large, they have increased their lobbying. And Lobbying is one of those things that we just don't think about it that much. It doesn't get discussed probably as much as it should uh, because these companies, you know, even smaller companies on the state or local level spend a large amount of money lobbying politicians to get what what they would like to see happen uh, within government. And I, I, I don't know, I haven't done a lot of research on it, if there is much transparency on lobbying and if you could actually track, uh, you know, I've seen stuff in the past about, you know, what a certain politician has received in lobbying money and that sort of thing. Um, but just kind of knowing where all of this money is going. And uh, I, again, I will refer people back to the earlier partisan comment, uh, but it does seem like it's it's one of those things that can have a lot of influence on uh, what our government is doing. And so when they're coming after these tech companies for antitrust stuff, uh, they start targeting more money to make sure that they can avoid that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, our next story, this one... <laughs> Uh, so Scale Factor is a business that raised like a hundred million dollars because they had created an AI accounting service. Okay. So companies could sign up uh, with this service, and you know they would take care of all this accounting stuff for you using AI. Well, they announced in the uh, I believe it was the past week or so that due to COVID nineteen, they will be closing down. And this is pretty early on in their business. Now, you would think that companies would need more AI accounting uh, during COVID-19 and closures and people not working and that sort of but thing. But who's going to trust a robot to do your accounting? Don't you want a person well, to do that? And that is where the great twist comes in, Dave. So I will uh, read you some of the article from Forbes that says... 
Uh, if customers had doubts, they were reassured by the $100 million invested by big-name venture capital firms. Because evenings are for families, not finance scales, Factors website proclaimed. But some of the startup founders and cafe owners who did take the night off soon regretted their decisions to hire Scale Factor. They didn't get what they paid for. <laughs> Instead of software producing financial statements, dozens of accountants did most of it manually from Scale Factor's Austin headquarters or from an outsourcing office in the Philippines, uh. according to f- former c- employees. So it wasn't an AI at accounting service. They were using real accountants to pretend like they were robots. Like why, and- well, one, I mean, I think it's great that they were employing people. Don't get me wrong. But it's yes. like... The promise was you built this incredible machine that could do all this stuff that people didn't have to worry about, and then you're just shifting the work over to other people. Yes, yes. And then the next sentence says, some customers say they received books filled with errors and were forced to rehire accountants or clean up the mess themselves. Yikes. So uh, shame on you, Scale Factor, Mm -hmm. for uh, we see this time and time again where these uh, tech companies promise the world, raise all this venture capitalist money, and now they have a convenient scapegoat of a global pandemic to say, oops, just kidding, we're not in business well, anymore. Well, I told you before that we need to come up with something to get to raise money for all this stuff. Um, what's the uh, the Kickstarter? Yeah, we need to make a Kickstarter yeah. and, and earn like $2 million and then just be like, oh, sorry, we're not going to do that. We've put your money in escrow or in a bank account and have earned a hundred thousand dollars in interest. We're just going to give you your money back and keep yeah. the oh, interest. Yes. Oh yes, so. we forget about interest so often. Yeah. But uh, Dave, I think you for are forgetting that uh, we do have some ethics. Oh right, right. Uh, and morals. That's that's morals. why we don't do yes. illegal and unmoral things. Yes. Is oh, it unmoral? Yeah, Ill, 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 immoral. <laughs> unmoral. I- immoral. <laughs> immoral. <laughs> Uh, they all work. They all work. Uh, this, uh, we'll move on to our security and privacy stories of the week. When I first heard this uh, about this issue going on, I was like, this is not news. Nobody uses this service anymore. Well, I was wrong. Uh, Garmin global outage caused by a ransomware attacks, sources say. So I started seeing this about midweek that uh, there was a Garmin outage. And people are like... Is Garmin out for you? And I just picture in my mind people driving around with Garmin GPS devices in their car, and I'm like, "What are you doing? No. You have a smartphone, but this is that's your it grandpa's is so more Garmin. Than, yeah, <laughs> your grandpa's Garmin. Now they have tons of fitness devices. Uh, their Garmin Connect service, um, and so this started Wednesday and continued through the weekend, uh, and syncs the activity to the cloud and they also have fly garmin which is its aviation navigation and route planning service minor detail yeah. having a service that you rely on for aviation navigation yeah, yeah they're, uh, they're embedded in many other systems Yes, yeah. So this is a mit- much bigger issue, and it does look like it was due to a ransomware attack that they were hit with. Um, they they have been pretty vague with their information, but some security research researchers have confirmed through you know other sources. TechCrunch has you know talked to some people off the record. They are dealing with one of those stinking ransomware attacks. Mm-hmm. And uh, one more story: our beloved DJI, the m- maker of uh, gimbals and um, drones and uh, you know these great products that they have. Well, it was found this week that the DJI Go software on Android had some pretty serious security flaws. Mm. And uh, this is a Chinese company, so that always, as we were discussing earlier, raises the... Um, the fears a little higher. The eyebrow raises the eyebrow. Yes, raises the eyebrow. And uh, it had been covertly collecting sensitive user data and can download and execute code of the developer's choice. Wow. Uh, so this is um, could be a big issue. I, we don't know necessarily what they were doing, but and it w- does appear to only be on Android, which... We don't do this on purpose, people. It's just the stories that are out there that uh, Android has some more issues, and for whatever reason, the iOS version is more secure, mostly because uh, Apple puts a lot of effort, like they do in these other 
causes that we talked about into security. So mm-hmm. if you have the DJI Go software on your Android phone, you might remove it for a while or at least make sure it's updated if they've released a new version. Our bonus odd take of the week. Ba-da-ba-ba. This is a great callback to a topic of discussion many times before. I have not listened to this yet, but I came across it. There is a new uh, podcast series called Boom Bust, The Rise and Fall of HQ Trivia. Uh, So I believe, I think it's about eight episodes. uh, And the person I saw talking about on Twitter said they binged through it in one day, um, listening through uh, kind of how... HQ Trivia and our beloved, uh, what was it, Steve? Yeah, Steve, I think was the guy's name. The host, uh, <laughs> the incredible rise and the incredible fall of HQ Trivia. So if you uh, are looking for a new podcast to listen to, which I definitely am not with my list, um, but you can check that out and uh, listen through the story there. But I, I have heard from a few sources that it is interesting, at least, uh, to get a little more insight into mm. what happened. Yeah. Because we just kind of briefly talked about the rise and fall here on our podcast yeah it came and went quick and these guys are working too hard they build this whole game system and an app and all this stuff they could have just did a kickstarter and yeah, then not yeah. did anything with it after they raised all this money i'm telling you yeah. people this is the wave of the future in the wave of the future yeah zero effort but you know what we always put a lot of effort into our picks yeah, of the week well i wish that were true um always <laughs> But it is true sometimes. Yes. And this week, I would like to talk about my pick of the week, which is something very near and dear to my heart. It's actually a video game, but it's not. What? Don't say that while I'm drinking. (laughs) Surprise me with coming out of nowhere with a game pick on here. I almost spit all over my laptop. Yeah. This is a little bit different, however. You may remember back, oh, I don't know, in the 90s, a little device called the PlayStation you remember the PlayStation oh, when it came yes, out? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think they're on the fifth version now. It's coming out this fall. But on this uh, PlayStation, there was a beloved series that was one of my absolute favorites. I love the cartoony artwork. I love the kind of tongue-in-cheek humor. I love the challenging puzzles. Um, and I also loved the adventure aspect and battle mechanics this game has. And the game, of course, I'm talking about, everyone's guessed it by now, is Spyro the Dragon. What? Oh, yeah. Remember Spyro? Obviously. The little purple purple dragon guy? Vaguely, Vaguely, I do. Well, I love that game. And I still have my original PlayStation disc, and I can now play it in my sometimes working PS3 that's backwards compatible. <laughs> but do I play it? Do I ever stick it in my machine and play it? No, because it's it's not convenient. You know what is convenient? The Nintendo Switch. So mm. I picked up uh, Spyro the Reignited Trilogy. It is games one, two, and three, as you might imagine, all on, well, I was going to say all on one cartridge for your Nintendo Switch, but really the first game is on the cartridge and the others you download for free oh, as part okay. of the cartridge. But I digress. The updated visuals and graphics, the gameplay, the controls, it's a wonderful sight to behold. It's the same game, exact same game, just way better. Now, this had come out in late 2018 on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. And it wasn't till many months later that it came out on Switch and Microsoft uh, PC. But it's pretty much available on every platform now. Uh, I was late to the game to get a Switch. And I was late to the game to buy this game. But I'm so glad I did. I got it for my birthday a while back. Actually, for Father's Day, sorry. Uh, when Father's Day came around. And I've just been enjoying the heck out of this game. So if you like old 3D platformers from your past, then pick up Spyro, the Reignited Trilogy, for whatever console you have. And I think you and your kids are going to have a great time. Very nice. That uh, does look like a fun one. Well, my pick of the week kind of stays on our theme of video production that we were talking about earlier. It's an app that I just went out and found when I was doing my holistic cost video, and it is called Teleprompter. 
Hmm. Now, this app uh, is exactly what you would think. You know, you have visions of Anchorman and Ron Burgundy <laughs> reading from his teleprompter and reading whatever I'm Ron is on Burgundy? there. Ron Burgundy? Yes. And, uh, but this, now you can just have it built into your phone. Now, when I did it, I actually, I had it on my phone and I had another camera set up. I made it much more complicated than I need to. But if you have a script that you would like to read or you're making a video and having a script with at least an outline to remember your talking points, you can use this, you can adjust the speed, you can adjust the size. Uh, I typed mine up in Apple Notes on my computer and then just copied it into the app. Uh, and they do have this free version. You can buy the premium version, which I believe I ended up buying as well. And it Probably like 10 bucks or 15 bucks, I'm guessing. So they do have uh, premium versions. There's the premium upgrade to get rid of the ads. And I forget if it's a higher quality or not. That's $14.99. And then they have auto captions for $100 where it'll actually yeah, match gonna... your script to the video and put the caption file in there, which uh, if you've ever done captioning work before and getting all of that set up, uh, if it works correctly. So I, I don't think for our average listener, <laughs> um, but the tele, teleprompter premium on the iOS app store uh, does have 4.7 stars on 1.5,000 uh, wow. 1500 ratings. So it is very well rated. There's several of these apps. This is just the one um, I did. They even have a feature where if you have a professional camera rig, you can get the little reflector and reverse it so that mm -hmm. when it reflects up mm -hmm. onto the camera like they do for the news, um, you can import your documents of many types and everything. So uh, just a great little way to up your video production if you're if you're needing to do that and uh, you can record the video with your phone so then you're looking right at the phone as the teleprompter is going so you don't get the big that's pretty slick the big typer do they call that typewriter face where your face is your head's turning i think they either as call you it read across the script they either call it uh, watching a tennis match or eating yes. an ear of corn Yes, exactly. Those would be uh, also accurate descriptions of it. But since, especially since most people uh, aren't real familiar with typewriters these days, but <laughs> it's a, a great little app. Uh, you could just get the free version, which is probably going to be more than what you need. Uh, but you can check that out. It's called Teleprompter, but uh, there's a if million you search of them. for yeah Teleprompter for your scripts. It's a a blue blue and whitish uh, logo there. I'll link to it in the show notes as we always do. Our Amazon purchase of the week. Uh, we love it when you use our affiliate links. We get a little bit of a kickback. We look through and see what people have bought. We sometimes can trace it down to who it was when they actually admit to it. Dave, this one might have been you, uh, knowing some of your hobbies and extracurricular activities. This is the Grayson unisex Halloween hooded cloak full length robe cape for costume and masquerade party. Dave, was this you? Well, you know, Nate, as you get older and your marriage gets a little stale, you have to you have to spice things up by a little role playing. Um, yes. But no, this is not me. I was thinking this would be perfect uh, if Comic Con were in session this year. I could go to Comic Con in this uh, whatever costume. But no, uh, I think I have as many costumes that I as I need here. Now, yeah. I would like to get like a full on Batman. Uh, you know, with the, ca the oh, cowl yeah. and the cape and everything. You know, as I get older, I'm starting to be shaped less and less like Batman. <laughs> yes. Uh, fat man. <laughs> that uh, might work. Is, I've seen that before, I believe. This is um, cool. So yeah, so it's got four and a half stars on 18 ratings. Uh, you can purchase it in medium large or extra large. Uh, so there is a little bit of uh, price range there. Um, and I'm, I'm looking to see if there's any other pertinent information. Great for Halloween, Christmas, masquerade balls, dress up party, role play, costume party. Uh, now, and, did you say this is for a child or an adult size? It says unisex, and it looks like it is adult sizes. Mm, okay. So the uh, medium is 51 inch, so that's pretty small. The extra large is 67 inch, uh, so that would still not be real long for me. Yeah. But I'm, it looks kind of to be a purple velvet. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it is not velvet. <laughs> it looks like it a is, nylon. It actually says 100% uh, polyester, oh, polyester soft polyester. satin. If I had to go out on a limb to guess which of our listeners purchased this, 
I think Chris is probably the man who would uh, wear something like this. Um, gotcha. Former military likes to be covert. This oh would, yeah, this would be something yeah, I with could a cloak. <laughs> with a purple cloak. He would look pretty darn nice in this. No, that, enough of my friendly shout outs to my friends. I don't know who purchased this for sure, but I'm guessing the price. <sighs> this is tough. I don't buy stuff like this. I'm going to guess this is $18. Well, the price ranges, depending on your size, from $9.49 to $15.99. Okay. So okay. you're pretty close on the top end there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if it was you, let us know. Let us know if we just spoiled your surprise Halloween costume for the costume contest to all our other listeners. Or if, if we spoiled the surprise to your spouse for a little bit of role-playing. Yes, yes, all of that good stuff. <laughs> it is available at Amazon Prime, so you should have it by now. And uh, let us know the build quality in case any of our other listeners give us a review, and uh, we'll talk about it on the podcast. Well, with that, we have talked to tech at you long enough. It's time to wrap up the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for sharing it with a friend. If you have any questions, please let us know. We will help you out. Now get out there and tech better. It's getting hot in this garage. Yes. What is it out there? 97 oh, degrees? Holy yeah, fart it's, uh, 100 today and tomorrow. It's, it's a roaster. <laughs>